had a great interest in the poet, um, playwright and novelist Oliver Goldsmith, who spent 13 years of his life um, in this area, in this, in this region of the Hidden Heartlands, um, very near Glasson Village. So I'm going to bring my family on a little tour, pointing out some of the landmarks that Goldsmith spoke about in his poem, The Deserted Village, which he wrote about this area. Um, I went to school here in Tupperclare School and our headmaster, Mr. Vincent Keating, had a huge interest and love in Oliver Goldsmith and I think that's where my interest and love came from. Um, there is a part of the poem which describes the village schoolmaster and Mr. Keating has often been liked to the village schoolmaster. This is just one of the lines. And still they gazed and still the wonder grew that one small head could carry all he knew. So that's what Oliver Goldsmith said about his village schoolmaster and quite an amazing man he must have been because as you can imagine back in those days there was no inter internet or anything like that so it was all in his head. So looking forward to showing everybody the Oliver Go Goldsmith landmarks in this area. So behind me where a goldsmith spent many of his formative years. His father was a clergyman and he was a curate in this area. Um, it is said that Goldsmith's poem, The Deserted Village, is written about this little village called Lesoy or Auburn, as he refers to it in his poem. So I'm now at the site of what is reputed to be Goldsmith's hawthorn bush. The hawthorn bush with seats beneath the shade. How often have I paused on every charm, the sheltered cot, the cultivated farm, the never-failing brook, the busy mill, the decent church that topped the neighbouring hill, the hawthorn bush with seats beneath the shade, for talking age and whispering lovers made. Okay, so hopefully we'll get back here soon, but in the meantime, we'll have to use the And why is that house where nut brown drafts inspired, where grey beard mirth and smiling toil retired, where the village statesmen talked with looks profound and news much older than their ale went round? So I can see why Goldsmith just loved this part of, part of Ireland, this part of the country. It's just so beautiful. Here I am at the never failing brook site of the busy mill which he mentioned in his poem. And incidentally this project which I did when I was in third year in school when my teacher was um, Mary Egan. Obviously she was just out of college but anyway thank you Mary. Great project. Loads of information here. So I'm going to read some of Goldsmith's fabulous poem with the backdrop of the gorgeous lottery behind me. The deserted village. Sweet Auburn, loveliest village of the plain where health and plenty cheered the labouring swain, where smiling spring its early visit paid, and parting summer's lingering bloom was delayed. Dear lovely bowers of innocence and ease, seats of my youth, wherever sport would please. I'm just going to read another excerpt as well, which is absolutely gorgeous. Beside yon straggling fence that skirts the way, with blossom furs and profitably gay, there in his noisy mansion skilled to rule, the village man his little school. A man severe he was and stern to view, I knew him well and every true and new. While, while words of learned length and thundering sound amazed the gazing rustics ranged around, and still they gazed and still the wonder grew that one small head could carry all he knew. So Goldsmith wrote this poem about this beautiful area, but it was also kind of a commentary on the time. Um, he was very concerned about poverty in Ireland and he was very concerned about the emigration that was taking